they also had sort of some character development. Look at the pretty flower guest. The Oma Takumi, I fulfilled my promise. Rest in peace now, my brother. <sighs> Gas, this is you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Baje. <laughs> Takumi. <laughs> Takumi, goodbye. Yeah. You freed my soul too, brother. Thank you. Ah, oh, how cute. Hey, you're uh, right. So are you. How about that? I wonder. Oh, wait, what? Yeah, all right. Yeah, you guys, I guess you retreated. What was it that possessed the bodies of King Garen and Takumi? Can sorrow and anger grow so strong that they create a monster all on their own? Or is there some force beyond our understanding, manipulating us all? That's called plot convenience. Why not firearm revelation? <laughs> If only oh, I had 20 extra dollars to find out this, <laughs> answer this question. <laughs> well, you can today at nintendoshop.com. Alas, such questions are not meant to be answered by mortals like us. All I know is that the war is finally over. You did well, thanks. Sander, thank you. But many sacrifices were made along the way, but now I know the world will finally know peace. I think that alone gives great meaning to all we have done and all we have lost. Hmm. Agreed. Whether others could say your course of action was wrong or right, it was your choice um, and your pure heart that never led you astray. I can hear Gast's groans of decreasing discomfort oh in the God. background. I just fucking hate never. everyone in this story. <laughs> I, got, I just fucking hate everyone. Like, I just... I don't have... I just don't even... I'll save it for later. I just... I'm, I'm, I'm swiping. I'm swiping here. <laughs> swiping left. <laughs> yeah, this is the only justice one could hope for in this world. Now, in memory of all the lives that were lost to this senseless war, we must create a bright future for the whole world to share. Yeah. You're right, and that's just what we'll do. But wait, something's not right. Where's Ashura? She was just here a moment ago. Has anyone seen her? What? She was just here. Where did she go? Ashura, where are you? Hmm. That's odd. Where could she have run off to? Time space? She must be somewhere in the castle. This was once her home, after all. Perhaps there's something she wanted to see or do now that she's returned. Well, hmm. Everything's Don't worry, Magnus will find her. But first, we need to locate all remaining soldiers and tell them the war is over. Oh, oh you're right. We'll probably find her along the way. Let's do it. What is this strange feeling I have? I can't help feeling like I've seen Ashura for the last time. Hmm. Probably still just wound up from the battle. That That's all it is. Hmm. Yeah, that's what it is. That uh -huh. bitch is dead, Sam. Hey, we're in Castle Craterberg. <laughs> Craterberg. <laughs> Oh, uh, from here on forward, let it be known that Garon, King of Nor, is to be succeeded by Prince Sander, Nor's crown prince and rightful heir. King Sander will rule over Nor and guide us in this new era of peace. Please, my league, accept this crown as a symbol of your reign. Hmm. Thank you, Gunter. As Ka King, I vow to rule with dignity and kindness, and to always lead our beloved Nor down the path of peace. Big brother. Sander, you're a king now. I've never met anyone wor more worthy of that title than you. What did he even do? <laughs> just like sat on the sidelines this whole game. What I did didn't. he even do to deserve to? Aside from being like Xander, come on, guys. Aside from also being, this. Aside from being continue, like. Continue. From being like the next king in line, like what? What did he do to deserve this? He fucking did shit all. He, he, he took the last great shield of talk to me. He got his ass beat. <laughs> that that also brings up. A question I, I had to myself when I first finished the uh, conquest is that if uh, Xander went down would this scene be any different uh, but no uh, it's not I guess oh oh well yes the role fits you nicely here's to a fresh start for the kingdom of Nor with you at the with you at the helm I know our kingdom will rise to greatness once more True. I just hope our Sander will bring hope and prosperity back to this land I wish I sure I could have seen Sander's ceremonia coronation ceremony me too Elise I can't believe she ran off like that right when we finally won the war I can't imagine why she left, but I hope, wherever she is, that she's happy. Uh. Hmm, if she was going to leave us, she could have at least said goodbye. Instead, she disappeared like a wave upon the ocean. You are the ocean, scream waves! Fitting, fitting. I love I how no one could just make the inference that maybe she just died. That would be cool. Fitting, I suppose. <laughs> like Fucking a wave video. upon the ocean. Oh, we're reciting the lyrics, guys. Wink, wink. You're lost in thoughts all alone. All right, we get it. <laughs> Sing me a song of co conquest and lies. Oh, oh, looks like looks like Sanders about to make a speech. He. Yes. 
His to first who? speech as a king. Listen very quietly, at least. To to Ceiling Dragon, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the magic conch. <laughs> as my father did before me, I will speak to the great Ceiling Dragon as well. <laughs> Behold, the magic conch of all! Thank you, fellow Norians, for joining me in celebration today. The war is finally over, and we have formed a new alliance with Hoshido. Though, once enemies, our kingdoms will now strive for peace together. You know, they'll totally just forgive us for killing their children and killing, yeah, like, all, everyone in their like royal the family. The villagers were, like, super pissed off at Korn and the rest of the army, but nope. This, this seems the like a fruit. Dictates, the story says otherwise, I guess. How are Hoshido okay with this? Believe us, we're happy. But how, how is Hoshido okay with this? We invaded because their country and killed. They shouldn't be. They, they shouldn't be. They but should it has be, to be furious. A happy end. It no, has trust to be a happy those shmangs. You keep reading. You'll all right, see. all right. The once enemies, our kingdoms will not strive for peace together. Since the war began and long before, both Nor and Hoshido were in agony. Freedoms were oppressed, possessions were plundered, the land was ravaged. Rebellions and uprisings tore our great kingdom apart. Our world was in pain. I never wish to see that happen again. Not to anyone. I won't allow it. As such, all tribes and other peoples and Nor shall be granted autonomy. We will not seek to expand our borders by infringing upon Hosh Hoshidian land. Instead, we shall strive to build a foundation of trust. Both kingdoms will do all we can to plant a seed of mutual respect. In the years to come, I look forward to watching that seed grow. We have a long road ahead of us. It will not be easy, but it is worth treading. On this day, I will. I assume that my father. Oh, I assume my father's throne. I vow to steady our course. The night sky is dark, but that is what allows the stars to shine so brilliantly. As king, I hope to be the light that guides Nor out of this long nights. I swear I will not rest until our beloved home awakens to a brighter tomorrow. For the greater pe for the great people of Nor, here is to a future of peace and prosperity. Hey, that was a beautiful speech, Sander. I'm certain we'll be able to do what father never had the chance to. We're going to build the kind of world that people can live happily in. Someday, in the far future, people will sing songs about all this. That's amazing, Sander. You sounded just like a king. You're so cool, big brother. Elise, keep your voice down and stop waving your arms like a fool. Once you, are you actively trying to bring shame on the entire royal family? Leo yeah. knows what's up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Calm down, Leo. Why not let her be? In any case, your voice got rather loud as well. Everyone's staring at you. Oh, well. Haha, <laughs> check out that nasty stare Gunter's giving you. We're all going to get an earful about this later. Oh, Gunter, he's like our papa. Ahem, if I could have everyone's attention, the coronation ceremony is now complete, making Sander reign in glory over our great kingdom forever. And now Sander re reveals, like, ha ha, it was the ruse all along, I am Greyfield! Haha, <laughs> I am mad, just like my father. Attack, attack, attack! <laughs> King Sander, how wonderful. I am Zola. <laughs> I have survived. Well done, Sander. What do you think, little prince? Did I sound like a, a worthy king? Nope. <laughs> well, I mean, the speech is quite yeah. politically, so I guess. Absolutely. Your speech was inspiring, and you looked so cool and powerful up there. You should have heard the fuss Elise was making. Yeah, but I mean, old, mean old Gunter scolded me about it afterwards. Oh. Oh, darling, but his lecture only lasted a minute or two. It went easy on you. What? I don't know. I look pretty ticked off to me. Well? I would have cried my eyes out after a lecture like that. Uh. Inoka Sakura. Wow, they're just here. Wow. I'm happy, so happy to see you. <laughs> thanks for coming today. No. no thanks required, Manx. Our kingdom signed a permanent peace treaty, so we can visit whenever we want. Of course, I'd be here for such a big event. I'll come running whenever you need me. What? Seriously? I... You still yeah, like isn't this me? fucking stupid? Isn't this really fucking dumb? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, both of the brothers mainline are dead, so guess who has to rule Hoshido now? Oh, no. And guess You're whose fault that is? No. No. Am I? <laughs> what? I <laughs> know. Thank you. Hey. Sakura, did you see me waving at you? Did you? Yeah. yeah, isn't it part of why you got scolded for your excessive waving? <laughs> ha! You heard all that? Stupid Gunter! <laughs> I thought you looked energetic and happy, just as a princess should be. But I hope you act just a little bit more refined at my coronation ceremony. Hee okay. <laughs> hee, if you insist. Oh. So are you to be the next queen of Hoshiro, Hinoka? That's lovely. You'll make a truly stunning queen. But... It's all been really challenging for Hinoka. She's training to behave more like a queen, but it's going terribly. Huh? Sakura, don't go about telling people that. I just can't help it. I never thought it would fall to me to rule Hoshiro. I always took it for granted that Ryoma would eventually be king. And after him. Whose fault that is. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it's the fucking kingdom you're and the people you're talking to right now. <laughs> and after That's him. That's alright, guess. It's alright. <laughs> it's okay, guess. Swipe left. I suppose 
I expected to pass on the honor to talk to me. I never had any interest in a throne. My brothers were the born leaders. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry Hanukkah. I missed them too. Huh? Mangs! No, it's fine. It is what it is. To be honest, <laughs> I... It I'm is done. what it is. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> it's okay, guys. Swipe left. I'm I still, done. I it still... is what it is? What the <laughs> fuck is that? What kind of answer is that? <laughs> it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. To be honest. It is what it is. <laughs> I still battle with the feelings of hatred towards the Norian army. The way they violated our kingdom for so many years, I won't soon forget it. But in time, I know these wounds will heal. I trust that Sander, uh, you and Sander to prevent such things from happening again. In my heart, I know the Oman Takumi don't hold, hold any grund grudges either. Inuka, you should know, however, that there are many Oshidians who still don't trust you. I will do all I can to convince the masses, but change won't come easy. I advise all of you to exercise caution when visiting Hoshida. Hmm. Understood. After all the evil that has been done in the name of Nor, it's only natural. The lies so that my kingdom has taken are a burden I shall bear for the rest of my life. The blood that was spilled, the tears that fell, the hearts that were broken. For all that and more, I am truly sorry. Please, Prince, I mean, King Sander, you can't take all the blame for that. As Queen, it will be my job to help clear up, clear up our misconception about Norians. It will take time, but it will happen. I will make sure of it. I'll, I'll do my best to help out, too. Inuka, Sakura. Thanks, when tensions finally subside in Hoshida, well, I want you to feel free to return to the castle anytime you like. The Roman Takumi may not be there anymore, but we are. I want you to feel at home there so we can all spend time together at siblings. Thank you, Hinoka. I promise to come visit often. Good. Well, it's getting late. We should be heading back. On behalf of Hoshida, allow me to thank you for inviting us here today. Sakura, will you please fetch my Pegasus? Yes. Sure. One Pegasus coming up. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you all at the coronation ceremony in Hoshida. I can't wait! See you soon! Off they go. Yeah, but you'll see them again soon. They are siblings, after all. all right. Yep, I'm truly blessed to have so many wonderful siblings in my life, including the ones I that killed. That I have killed two of them. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yes, I, I, I want to spoil something. No, I, I know I know Ray knows this. And I think the inference that Mangs, you can make, you can infer it too. But what? I don't know if you want to be spoiled about the whole... I think I'm more I'm more worried know. about the viewers getting spoiled, so you probably shouldn't. Yeah. So if it's a spoiler, I you shouldn't say it because the people watching yeah, might get angry. And now I can spend as much time as I want to with all of them. <laughs> Shall we head to the banquet now? Huh? Banquet? What banquet? Oh. All right. This is your first time at an important Orion event. He lived in the castle his entire life. Okay. In Nor, whenever something big happens at the castle, we hold a rank royal banquet. But this time it's going to be a huge event that spans the whole capital. Sander decided he wanted to provide food for the whole town, not just the royals. Now everyone can celebrate the occasion and enjoy the banquet together. Wow, oh, that sounds amazing. Right? Doesn't it? I'm going to serve up a yummy food to all kinds of different people. Oh. You can't carry it all by yourself, right? I'll go with you. <laughs> I, for one, shall busy myself by entertaining the lords and ladies. What is he, a jester now? We must not neglect making good impression on them as well. I'm counting on all of you tonight. I doubt I'll be able to stray too far from the throne. Right. Time to get cooking and show everyone the true meaning of Norin Cassine. I'll make sure to set aside a few plates of your oh favorite foods as well, my lord. Oh my fucking god, this, con this fucking writing is so... <laughs> I'm just so pissed. Look at the pretty throne, guest. Look at the pretty throne. Look oh, at the pretty throne, it looks like shit. <laughs> it looks like a fucking... I don't know, someone just put a bunch of antlers on top of a chair. Hmm, I wonder what kind of foods are served at an Oreo banquet. Or are they all gonna have a line now about food? Like, what? Probably <laughs> everyone who supported with you before. The capital is brimming with jubilation. This is the Nora I always dreamed of. Okay. Cool. Right. Ah, this is going to be perfect. Let's all enjoy ourselves tonight. Seeing Nora filled with so many smiling faces is a dream come true. We sacrificed so much to arrive at this victory. We're now happily celebrating. The path I chose was difficult, but I know, no, I wasn't the wrong one. It wasn't the wrong one. Oh, really? Even if a path looks dark ahead, you must keep walking until you see the light. Thank you, all of you, for believing in me. Having you all of you here at my side fills my heart with joy. Okay. Please stop talking. <laughs> you, everyone seems to be having a great time at the banquet. It doesn't seem like it will stop anytime soon. I better take a little break. I just sit here in my full plate armor out on the grass, you know. Hmm, this place. It reminds me of the lake where I first met Ashura. I wonder where she is right now. Ashura. <gasps> huh? Zounds like your Muzax. That song. Oh, there she is. 
What are you doing here? <laughs> she still has my hat. Azura, <laughs> it's really you. You've come back. Where have you been all this time? Azura? Azura? Hey. hey, Manx. What do you think of my song? Well, what do you think of it? It's um, very pretty. I see. But if you listen carefully, you might sense a power you didn't notice before. Oh. Really? Truly. Well, I'm sure you'll feel it this time. Close your eyes and listen with your heart. Huh? But I don't have a heart. <laughs> Please, Manx. <laughs> just do as I say. Understood. Okay. Alright. Sure, I'm really happy you decided to come back to us. Just having you by my side again reminds me of all we've been through. You were always there for me, even when my whole world was falling apart. If it weren't for you, I probably would have died a long time ago. To me, you're... Ashura? What? what was that an illusion? <gasps> Thank you, Manx. I know we'll meet again one day. Ashura? Yeah. I'm sure we will. And when we do, I'll tell you how much you mean to me. Hey, Max. aren't you married to her? I am. I have a. We have a fucking kid. <laughs> we have kids. Two Agba. kids, even. We have two the, fucking kids. This, this, this scene plays out exactly the same if you're not married to her. I should really? attest. Yeah, I've heard that in Birthright, you get a different ending if you're married to a sure. That's what a lot of people have been telling me. Max, enjoying some t alone time, are we? I'm about to lead a group of nobles into town. Will you join us? <laughs> Of course, sounds fun. Hey, Sander, wait up. Haha, <laughs> don't you dare leave without me! Your kid, your kid, Time wife? for the ending cutscene. Okay, aww. Come on, hurry up! There we go. <laughs> hey, did you, you know forget how, this you know, is an anime? Did you, know how, did you know how that boobs, uh, work like that? Did you ever motorboat anyone? And did you ever get your face bounced right off of it? Nope, Thanks. never. Let's just, let's just remember that this yeah, game yeah. is an anime. And yeah. I, I, I have motorboated the tits that size, and I can attest, I have, I, my head did not bounce back. Camilla's yeah, tits I mean, must be mine magical. either. It's never really happened to me. <laughs> you two getting all the action. Had a gift for that. <laughs> no doubt, you always will. Chuckles attentionally. That's Camilla in a nutshell. Runs. Leo, my man. There was no sense in this war. Only madness. And greed. War is monstrous. We are told to make war to support our country. But it's a lie told by those who profit from bloodshed. Generic war speech. In my reign as Nor's new king, I vow to seek peace and understanding. <laughs> I can walk with on my you, own, Elise. Jesus. My hand. No, she has to make sure you come along with you. Because uh, we're all an anime an... family. Yeah. Perfect anime family. Fuck this game! <laughs> Fuck you! Okay, you know what, Gast? Gast? Okay, I want to hear Ray's opinion of this game. Or, I want to hear Ray's oh. opinion of Fates. We, Gast, we all know, not to silence you, but we all know at this point perfectly how you feel about the game. <laughs> So I I think Actually, I will just I'm not, I'm not I'm not sure I think you just got my my big take on the story but I, I still have some stuff to talk all right, about. Alright, you you get you will get May, chance May, you will get May, chance May, to talk May, you will get you will get your chance. All right, all right, all right. So right, um, what do you think about still, uh, this I, game? I I still have yet to uh, finish Revelation. I am still at uh, chapter 18, but uh, it took me a while. It, it took me a while to get actually get uh, interested in things when the conquest. The opening of the game is. Really, I was lost in media stress of the movie because there was just so much me that I had to take in as a new fire, as a veteran fireman player. There's, there's all this new stuff and just didn't click with me immediately. But once I started getting into the chapter 7, 8, 9, 10 Birthright, it just started flowing a little more. Uh, Birthright story is just like the whatever, it's just, it's just a pay by numbers fireman story. But this, this is a lot different and a lot <laughs> different than what I was expecting. I was expecting, oh, you're gonna work from the inside to, uh, Take out the take out the government and overthrow Garen from the inside. But no, it's just I'm gonna do what Garen, I, Garen wants. I'm gonna be a she. Ba 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 ba. And then you just go through Hoshino and overthrow that from the inside, just so you can over uh, put this elaborate plan to action. Azra's ruse cruise, as it were. Hmm. And yeah, it's, it's kind of really stupid, but at the same time reminds me of the end game of Age Reunion, another game I really like, but that just also falls apart at the end. But, okay. but the gameplay, uh, yeah, same same thing with me. It took me a while to get uh, a fix of the gameplay, but 
Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, uh, Conquest's maps are very well designed for the most part, although a lot of the endgame maps are very dickish. Mm. I'm uh, um, gotta point fingers at Chapter 26. I fucking hate that map. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it's uh, some things I've noticed that I was talking with Mel when she was uh, streaming uh, Conquest is that she uh, feel, uh, feels that the difficulty is more a fixed, like, like someone would make uh like it was more like a rom hack sort of difficulty like gas you can chime in if you want to but she that's what she felt like but i agree this is like some the difficulty in some of the maps it felt like more like uh like someone what what someone would do on a rom hack like i like dream of five like giving all these enemies uh weapons that you can't use or these skills that you can't use and just they're just flat out cheating and yeah. I don't like that Fire Emblem. I, I mean, unless they explicitly tell you that this is something the enemy can use, this is something you can use. I just feel like everyone should have everything. There should be no limits between player and enemy. It's just a matter of how how much you can overcome being the player versus being the enemy. Just numbers for, uh, and all that you've got. But they just, they just they just throw some overpowered shit at you. Like the entirety of what uh, Iago was doing in Chapter 26 or the yeah. gimmick in Chapter 19. Or, or archers with counter. Archers, or archers with, counter, with counter, for example. That's the classic example of just, okay, I, I get attacked by 10 archers with counter. It's like, that's just cheap. That's just cheap. I can't get that. <laughs> Yeah, please, please. And continue. I feel, and I, and I affix that to the the maybe it's because of the difficulty setting. Maybe it's a little more tame on on normal mode. But uh, on the other on the other side of the spectrum, I really liked a lot of the map design. The, they definitely hit my Thracia boner real good. I'm oh, gonna yeah. tell you that right now. I really <laughs> got fixed for a lot of the map designs, just not the late ones. Uh. And the gameplay, on, on the whole, in the general gameplay, I quite like it a lot. And considering that every, each weapon has infinite uses and they have their own uh, strengths and weaknesses, the new weapon triangles and all that, it really works for this game. Uh, just for this game, though, I don't know if I would like to see it in other Fire Emblem games. I would prefer to go back to classic style, personally. But for this game, I felt it worked really, really well. That's just my two cents. All right. That was, uh, that was a nice review, all right. So, uh... All right, brace yourselves, crying fanboys. We need to like, give the microphone over to Gast. So, Gast, let us, let okay. us hear your Everyone, opinions. <laughs> um, so, I'll start with the things that I like a lot. Uh, <clears throat> right. I think, like like you said, Ray, um, the, way, like, the way the chapters are balanced and the way that it really complements the new gameplay mechanics is really, uh, it's really nice to see. Um, and well, like, we talked about this before, uh, Mangs, when we felt like this kind of sometimes doesn't feel like a Fire Emblem game, but it feels like something else entirely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that just has, I think just has to do with um, all the new shit, the triangle and stuff. But I think it's, I think it's a welcome change. Uh, I don't know if I'd like to see it in future installments, but at the same time, I can really, I can really, really respect um, their huge jump in quality and gameplay considering where it was before and to what it was now it feels like completely just a completely different team was working on the gameplay and it was really nice to see um <clears throat> that said um there was there was i felt like there was a lot there was pacing issues in some of the chapters that got really fucking annoying um but i guess mm -hmm. that's kind of par for the course of the fire emblem games though i don't really remember uh radiant dawn having a lot of pacing issues but i guess that's an opinion i don't know um yeah i think all the gimmicks some most of the gimmicks were pretty decent some of the gimmicks weren't that great but you know it's just I, i'm just i'm really impressed with all of the risks they tried to take mm -hmm. um and it and it and it's just i for me like when when i'm when i'm sort of thinking of like like map designs i'm like oh well what kind of what, what would really make this chapter stand out? And I felt like that was the perspective that they had for every single chapter. And even if some of them flopped on their face really bad, like you can, I, for me, as someone who's, who's trying to do something similar, it's like, I can really respect what they tried to do and all the hours they put in to make sure every, all the well-paced chapters just felt like they were really thought out for a long time. And even the ones that weren't well-paced, at least they tried. And that's what I really appreciate is that the fact that they tried with gameplay this time. Um, the story, though, it's just... <laughs> Here it so comes! so garbage, man. It is so shit. I feel like no one has... 
Like, no one acts normal. And I, it's just, no one, like, like, I, and I understand that, like, I'm the, it's the perspective from the, my, from my view as a player, which would be different from the ones who are, like, like, just actually doing the actions. But that being said, it's just like, I feel like half the time I'm just like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this decision? Why would you do that? If you're a human being, why would you, why would you do this? How come you feel so like this and that? I'm just, it, for me, it just feels like these aren't really like realistic people. And I'm just like, you can't, you can't relate to so, them. You can't relate to them. That's yeah, the problem. I can't relate to them. I can't, I, I have, I don't give a shit about like almost any of them. I don't understand why they tried to make Lilith such a dramatic character. And then they just went back on that with the, like, what the fuck was that Lilith thing? It made no sense. That was, was absolutely so fucking garbage. I, I am totally, completely agree with you, Gas. Yeah, it was like, there was so many, there were so many unnecessary things to try to just make this story deeper than it was. And it's if you like, had, like, yeah, it's like they created the game without that thing happening and then they went through the script and they went like you know what guys you know what this game needs we need someone dying it's like oh yeah that that would be cool let's uh put it in at the eternal staircase okay uh who should we kill off uh lilith yeah, okay let's do it okay and then they just write in off? they wrote in the lilith that scene and just like okay but you know uh they probably invested a lot into her you know with the whole feeding thing uh maybe we should i just keep her as a spirit in the time space yeah, and don't mention like it the, like it's like it cheapens it cheapens the story when you try to like not try like this is what I mean by like, like low quality, like, like ROM hacky storytelling. It's just like you're just throwing something in to just try to get something out of it, and it's just like it doesn't make any sense, and it's just like an amateur move. Like, don't like don't if you're gonna like kill off a character, don't make it someone who's just not even gonna die in the end because <laughs> you can use her in the my castle. Like it's cheapens the deaths, the forced deaths are all cheap, and Ryoma's was the only one that was actually well written, and because. You know, it was like a tragic thing, and Mangs actually didn't have a choice in it. Yeah. And, but even, the thing is, and I know people are going to think I'm heartless for this, but it happened so late in the game, and 20 chapters of just bullshit kept happening, I just didn't even care at the end. Like, I just, I, 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 I just couldn't give a fuck. I just don't give a shit about any of these characters. In fact, I actually was happy when Ryoma died, because at least Korin felt like shit afterwards. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Yes, Corn. I actually, I hate you so much. Seeing you cry makes me happy. Like, that's how it felt. Like, I had no motivation. And a lot of people have actually, I've, I've, I've spoken to a lot of people who've said straight up, like, after Chapter 15, I just stopped playing Conquest. And a lot of people, like, just gave up. They were just like, this, this is so dumb. There are so many stupid instances of just nonsensicalness. And, like, so much unexplained stuff that just depend that just depends on other games is just something... I guess it's sort of like what you'd expect from a game that kind of bases itself on two other games with it, but I just don't think that's... I think a game should be able to stand out on its own without having so many fucking questions to ask. Hmm. And in terms of characters, um, I don't... The thing I'm kind of torn about these characters is that, like, you know how, like, in other Fire Emblem games, and this is going to seem, like, pretty nitpicky as well, but you know how in other Fire Emblem games, like, when you recruit characters, they or, they kind of seem to have their own motivations for being there. Mm -hmm. In con in in conquest, it seems like a lot of the characters are just either children, so you kind of know why they're there in the first place, or they're vessels. So you or they're you yeah. Know what I mean, like, and what's so funny so about that? I'd like to take an example from uh, your hack bloodlines. It's so f it's so easy to it's so easy to give a character some motivation because. When I first played through Bloodlines, the first piece of criticism I gave to you was why are these characters sticking with your main character? And immediately after that, you wrote in one single scene where your main character just went like, okay, you guys, you don't have to tag along with me if you don't want to. <laughs> and they basically go like, yeah, but we want to because blah, 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 blah. And after that, I had no issues with it. It's so easy. It's so easy to give characters a reason for following you. But this game failed really hard on that, I feel. I just really wanted to add that. It's not hard at all. You just have to give them some motivations. But if you don't, it feels weird. So anyway, yeah, please yeah. continue. But, and it's just like, I think of characters that were on the enemy team and then they came on your side because you talked to them. And the closest thing we got to that was Kaze. And I yeah. can understand Kaze's backstory for doing it, but like, it just sort of seems like all these characters kind of have like a set reason to be here and it's not, I'm not really interested in seeing their backstory because I already sort of know where they come from, and it's just we like, like there's you, no Corin, sort of like, there's, so we will join you. There's no sort of like Navars or like 
We, we like you, Corin. That's why we want to join you. We just think you're a nice guy. That's literally like 99% of the motivations for joining. I feel like I, I have to agree with you guys for the same the same people that uh, with Gasly mentioned that a lot of the characters you see here are either are they're either the royal family, uh, or the vassals of the royal family, or just the children units. And there are very little in between. There are very little of the little people. There's mm -hmm. not much that that there, and so I could say the same thing for birthright. There's not much of that there either. Especially oh, with the retainers. But... Especially with since since there's so many retainers here, you don't really get yeah, the I village girl. You don't get the Nephnis or the uh, Brahms, you know. You don't you, get the village you even, people. You, you get you get Nyx, and that's what makes and then that that kind of makes Nyx interesting because she actually has a backstory that you have no idea what it is, which mm -hmm. makes me interested in seeing her personality. So that makes me respect kind of characters like her when they're just like outsiders coming into the game instead of just being part of like the fucking royal family or some shit. Yeah. Um. And, and I've been I've actually to people's surprise I've actually been reading a lot of I've been I've been trying to catch up on supports for conquest just and especially in Camilla because I have this like dislike for Camilla and I want to figure out. If oh her, me if too. Ah, uh, Camilla's falls so much in my eyes. Fucking hell. Yeah, I, and I want to see uh, if her come supports. Come here, Meg. I want to give you a hug. <laughs> I want to see if her supports are actually like impressive and they actually have character arcs of their own that actually explain but the wiki doesn't have all the supports updated so I can't really say anything about that but so far um, what do you think <sighs> without spoiling they're, anything yeah I'll, without spoiling anything they're okay like they're nothing special like they're just they're they're all right for, in my eyes um, yeah. so <sighs> For me personally, I think the gameplay is 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 really good, and I think I'd really appreciate it more if I actually could play it myself, so I can get a better opinion of it. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna assume I'm just gonna jump in with the consensus here and say it was like Conquest has some really great gameplay. Uh, it does miss the mark on sometimes, but a lot of Fire Emblem games miss the mark, so you can't you can realistically never expect perfect gameplay from Fire Emblem all the time. Um, in terms of characters and story, I just I fucking, I, you know, F, F minus, just fucking, All right. fuck, whack. So Awful. yeah, thank you guys <laughs> for that heartfelt uh, explanation. I will now give my closing thoughts on uh, Conquest. Uh, so I'll start by talking about the gameplay too. Um, every single map in Conquests is like solving a puzzle. Almost everyone, except for, you know, you have the occasional shit pile. Um, but it feels like every time, since I, I was actually playing the whole time, I got challenged on so many areas, uh, I felt like I really had to wrap my brain around most of the chapters. So I really, really appreciate the fact that every new chapter is a challenge, and particularly for the, at least the first half of the game, every single map was the same, like, in terms of, it always challenged me, and in most of the maps, I always got this, oh shit feeling, like, it, it, the map tricks me. Like, for example, in chapter 10, where you think everything goes well, and then suddenly Takumi activates a dragon rain and he dries out the river. And it's like, oh shit, now they can attack from all sides. That's the hype moment right there. And, you know, shit like that, Conquest takes you with your pants down, like, almost every <laughs> single chapter. And I really like that. And the fact that they managed to do that without including a single ambush spawn, they fucking just removed ambush spawns entirely. I fucking praised the Lord, and I'm not even Christian, you know, I, I was so happy when that happened. So, for me, gameplay-wise, I feel like this game has taken a big step in the right direction. It's kind of like, um, um, Mr. Antonin made a really funny comment about, like, the evolution of Fire Emblem, how it actually, like... Not quality-wise, but like depth-wise, it kind of stagnated when it came into the Game Boy Advance era. Because if you look at games like Fire Emblem 4, Fire Emblem 5, they're all really advanced compared to Fire Emblem 1, 2, and 3. And then when we came over to Fire Emblem 6, 7, and 8, while they are great games and I love the shit out of them, they kind of went back a little bit in terms of complexity. Uh, especially because the game, the, lim the limitations of the Game Boy Advanced. And then ever since Fire Emblem 8, we have steadily like been moving forward in terms of complexity. And then when Awakening came, I, fe I felt like we really went into a dark age again where the game really became a lot more simple and kind of like, took a step back. And then I felt like in Fates, we have taken a big step forward in terms of complexity and gameplay mechanics. And I really, I really like the direction of gameplay in terms of where the series is headed because I had a ton of fun playing these maps. So much fun. It's been a while since I, as a Fire Emblem gamer, have been sitting and 
jumping with joy, looking forward to the next chapter. Like I've literally been, I've literally been sitting on Skype, waiting for Gas to get home from work so we can help let's fight together, and then, like going on to Skype and going like, okay, where is Gas? Is he online yet? Is he online yet? <laughs> because I want to play the next chapter so badly. <laughs> I haven't had that feeling like I had that feeling slightly like in Radiant Dawn when we let's play that right? and I had the, mm. and I had that feeling the first time I played six, seven, and eight. Uh, but it's been a while. It's been a really big while since I had that jo yeah. enjoyment. And oh my god, it's so nice. It's so nice. And what I feel like... The thing is, I, fe I feel like I'm also noticing a lot of like things that could have been. I failed... They, they could have done so much more with Dragon Veins. I feel like the Dragon Veins was the big selling point of Fates. And I don't feel like they felt relevant at all. I think it was... Was it Chapter 20 uh, where we froze the Faceless Gas? Do you remember? I think it was Chapter 20. Do you remember, Ray? You, that is correct. Uh, That's, that is the yeah. map. You're that of, was, in the, my the opinion. The yeah, that was, in my opinion, Dragon Vein's done right. We moved forward from Dragon Vein to Dragon Vein, freezing the faceless as we went, and they placed the rock golems, or the Play Doh golems, as I like to call them. <laughs> we had to go and kill them because they had fire branch attacks. We have to strategically move our entire army, and it was an escape map, so we had to make sure nobody was left behind. And the escape map gave me that amazing feeling of, holy shit, uh, I hope my slower units managed to catch up. That is like, if that is not a successful escape chapter, then I don't know what. When you actually have that panic feeling of, shit, my slower units need to catch up, I need to go rescue them, you know? Yeah. That, oh, that was yeah. so well. I, I was tense during that entire chapter. Like, can I get yeah. to the next Dragon Vein? That was like the only time where the Dragon Veins were so well done. Every In every other area, I feel like the Dragon Veins are just an, an annoyance. The worst, like, worst examples of Dragon Vein is the chapter where you fight against Hinoka. Is that chapter 26 or 25? I can't remember. Do you remember? Four, right? 24. Yeah. 24. The fucking, like, oh, I need to step on Dragon Veins to slow down the Pegasus Knights, and if I don't do it, they have 12 movement and they have bows. I just, you haven't seen that chapter yet, right? But what I did was I just boxed my army into a giant blob with my weaker units in the middle and just took on the Pegasus Knights reinforcements before moving forward. <laughs> that's, kind of how, that's kind of how I did dealt with uh, the Wind Chad map. Uh, that was actually short 20. You were thinking of 20. Oh, God, the Wind Chad. Yeah, oh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll get to that. Uh, Alright, just... What is going on here? Oh, you pick five units uh, from your own to make I into Einherjar, and then that you can buy them for the uh, for your other route. All right, mine's for sure on LSF and Kana, I guess. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, but uh, let's continue. So, yeah, I feel like Dragon Veins were a wasted mechanic. It wasn't used as much as I wanted to to create new paths, which is what they advertised in the interview that I read out on my channel. They said that you would use Dragon Veins to create new paths, and you only really do that in the prologue. In any other map, the Dragon Veins either remove paths by freeze, like freezing river or the, by unmelting rivers and shit, or you know they don't really create new parts at all and. That yeah. really pisses me off. Like I could say that I could say the mangs without spoiling much that you do that a lot more in Birthright. Okay, that's the, good. There that's are more good. Dragon veins right. that will help you create passageways or let you progress forward. There were certain cool, cool. certain like places during the game where I was actually sort of happy with the way dragon veins worked because some of them were a bit trolly. They were a bit like, uh, all right, uh, do you, like if you activate this dragon vein, <laughs> what's gonna happen is you're gonna you're gonna it's gonna fuck you over in some way. Like for example, during the ice trap map, if you if you activate the dragon vein there, you're actually gonna melt the river and you're gonna get to the village in time. So, I like that certain dragon veins aren't like you aren't always supposed to use them, and I think that's really fucking cool. This is really distracting. But, uh, um, so, so yeah, I, the dragon veins. I feel like that that's a big missed opportunity. I really wish that wasn't the case. I think it's funny how they advertise Dragon Veins to be like this really like revolutionary thing, but of all the mechanics, it felt like Dragon Veins sem seemed like the least, the weakest, yeah, like, the Def weakest definitely, one. Definitely, definitely. And like like you said, it was <clears throat> for me, it was pretty disappointing. Um, and when they used it right, it felt really well. Mm -hmm. But when they used it in other times, it sort of felt like there was, it kind of didn't really felt like it was bang for my buck when I wanted to use it. And that's how I felt like a chore more than anything. Like just, yeah, I, yeah, you I know, mean, you were that's... the one who played it. Granted, you were the one who played it, but like, you can attest to this. Like, oh, yeah. I felt like uh, there wasn't a lot of strategic, like, yes, there's strategic value to using them. But like, sometimes you, I felt like if I was playing, I just feel like, do I, can I, can this just not be in this level? Like, can this just not yeah, be here? It's like, just will annoying. anything of value, when anything of value, will anything of value be lost? 
mm. if this was cut out from this chapter. So fates, uh, moving over to my next topic, which is gimmicks. Every single map had some sort of gimmick. There wasn't a map in my in my opinion, like that wasn't a paralogue that didn't have a gimmick. There was always some sort of gimmick related to dragon veins and other things. Most of the time this was a lot of fun, other times it fell flat on its arse. The Wind Tribe chapter was the biggest offender of a gimmick that just went to hell. Having your units blown up and down like that, oh my god, it was the most tedious, annoying thing ever, and I got a headache from it. I got a headache, I- Preach I, it, brother. I got a fucking headache. <laughs> At the end of the chapter, I turned off my emulator and I went like, I lost Leo in that chapter because I- I just couldn't concentrate because the wind gimmick was so annoying. But look at uh, this guy. Wait for Leo to go. I was like, oh, so that they 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 did the mo they did the they did mostly right for the most part, but sometimes they just failed horribly. It and was, I, I feel it was like also just it was also just a bullshit thing because like why can't I stay when the like why is it the why are the bosses allowed to not move and I and I have, and I'm forced to move like yeah, what the fuck like, I was it just really, felt like really stupid. like like you said Ray it's like sometimes there's just like unfair advantages that the enemies have for like no yeah reason. I wish you I wish you could have moved Fuga with using the dragon veins just knock him off of his throne yeah. yeah. Stay there, or just move back on. But you can, since he can't move, the game won't let him. Or, or but a thing like, that me and Gast also said, that, Ray. Why can't you use the pillars to hold your units in place? When, yeah, when I when I first really saw cool. the pillars, I was that like, okay, really what if I move on the pillar? My unit won't move because he's holding to the pillar. But now it didn't. It didn't. didn't Hayato move. doesn't move. Hayato doesn't, doesn't move. move. Nope. I was like, what the fuck? Why doesn't Hayato move? Like, what the dick? I, 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 I also figured, uh, affixed to that that maybe they were, like, chaining themselves down. It was, like, units who can't move are, like, chain themselves down as an in-universe in mechanic. But they never said that, so I was a bit disappointed about that. Yeah. Yeah, so that... it was just weird. So, yeah. It was not fair and just kind of stupid. So the dragon also... events kind of felt like Lilith. They were random and irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was uh, also the Ryoma chapter. What do you think about that? Uh, the Ryoma chapter? Oh, fucking hell, yeah, that was, like, the most anticlimactic. Like, the Ryoma chapter, probably the worst chapter of the bunch. Like, you didn't see it, Ray, but effectively, how the Ryoma chapter went for went for when when I played it... Did you, did you play for the Death of a Thousand Cuts? Uh, basically. Uh, Magnus and Ryoma had the most boring and stale duel ever, and... It was I Edward and Doodle will be sure. I didn't fucking do that. I just wanted to get the chests, and then... I just ran out of time when I managed to uh, get to the to the his to his room in time and just managed but to play the duel. The way jet. of death, Ray. The whole way of death. You know the one I'm talking about on the right side. Man, like... fuck that place. Oh, <laughs> that, 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 that... that was so yeah. bad. That was that was an example of okay. You, I I know you can be a smart ass game, but this is too much. Three range that ninja was... shurikens that mm. take away forty percent of your health and lunges you into secret chambers with other units that take away forty percent of your health and they have all three range so they can attack you. Like no, no game, you're overdoing it. This is not fun. This is just not fun. Okay. Man, that map is disgusting. And then and then yeah, Max just really kills Ryoma and it's a, and it's a game over. I mean, I'm, I was laughing for like five minutes because I was yeah, so... it was so it was hilarious. And it's like it's like just one of those things where like the most like the the highest easily the most climactic part of the story is eclipsed by the lamest like one of the lamest chapters in the game. It was just I thought it was yeah the funny. Manx the Manx versus Yoma should have been a fucking there should have been like a really highlight you know but it just ended up being horrible Ryoma will wait patiently for 20 turns why so why weird. does he Fucking wait stupid. i hated that so much that talk about ludo narrative this science right there boys what, he you just he just admit, he just admits into his face that yeah i killed hinoka hey ray yes. hey ray hey ray you you killed my sister i'm going to rip your throat out after 20 minutes I'm gonna wait here. I'm just, <laughs> just gonna take right now. I'm just gonna stand here, right? But in 20 minutes, I will the kill you. The equivalent map in Birthright happens happens legit. It it just flows more much more smoothly. All the equivalent right. map in Birthright. That's good. That's good. Anyway, uh, so moving on. Uh, I really, really like a big part of this game was the dual strike and the guard mechanic, or the defensive stance or the aggressive stance, as people like to call it. I really like the dual strike mechanic. It's leagues better than it was in Awakening. But I feel like enemies... I, I wonder if this game would have been slightly better if the enemies didn't use dual strikes. Because the fact that enemies use dual strikes and the AI is really good in this game and it really takes full advantage of the dual strikes means that you take so much more damage on enemy face. And it doesn't I help. 
right yeah. here because I when I played this game I decided not to use the defensive tank. Oh yeah, you yeah. have a really good opinion on this thing. Holy shit. That must have been hard. It was really, really hard. I have never restarted a Fire Emblem game so many more times ever since I first played Thracia. It Holy was that shit. difficult. Straight up. And it doesn't help that hit points growths are lower than they have ever been in this game. Hit points yeah, growth. I actually quite like that. I actually quite like that the HP goes quite low in this game. Cause you it, do. It, it, it's, more, it's more like classic Fire Emblem, like, like FE1 style Fire Emblem. Yeah, where maybe. It's, it's much more, it's, it's a, there's a much more of an emphasis on squishy units that you gotta protect them. But it's completely block -side, uh, block sided by the dual attack system in this game. I just, I just feel like the only units in my army for a very large portion of the game that could even survive enemy phase was Effie and Arthur. They were the only guys that I could yeah. have on the front lines. Everyone else would just get demolished unless they were paired up with a tanky yeah. unit. And that's like, that kind of limits how I can push forward, you know. And that's what makes me wonder if maybe if the enemies didn't dual strike, I think this game would have been a little bit more enjoyable for me as a player. They could have scaled up the difficulty to like match, like to to keep it balanced, but. The fact that every enemy dual strikes just means that I, I just got too afraid to move forward, and that brings me to my next point, which is turtling. I turtled the shit out of this game. You, you, I'm sure so you guys noticed the turn count. It was not good. Um, <laughs> many of the maps... this Conquest missed out on a very big deal that has been present since the first Fire Emblem game, and that is thieves scoring for treasure chests and village being destroyed. Village being destroyed happened twice, I think. During yeah, the entire twice. game. Thieves going twice. for treasure chests never happened. Never. Like, thieves going for treasure chests is like the oldest anti-turtling incentive you ever have. Okay, here's a map. You can turtle it, but on turn 7, this angelic robe is getting stolen away by that thief. So you have a choice. You can either like get your fucking game on and move forward, and you'll get rewarded with this nice stat booster... Or you can stay back in Turtle, and you won't get your hands on the nice stat booster. That is, in my opinion, the best risk-reward system Fire Emblem has ever created. And it, it attests to the fact that it's been in nearly every single Fire Emblem game. Except for one, this sure. one. Except for this one. And, and why is it so hard to include a village and put a bandit in a corner and make the bandit go towards the village? Like, why couldn't this game do that more? I feel like they just forgot. They just forgot about it. In the heyday of, of all their new mechanics, they, they forgot some of the oldest tricks in the yeah, book. They, they, they put so much shit into this game that they forgot some of the bare essentials. And that, for me, and that really fucking came true. Like, in certain parts, like, uh, when I did, was it Chapter 24, the one with Inoka, I think? Yeah, ch Chapter 24. I tried to play that chapter normally. I got my ass handed to me. Next time around, I just turtled the shit out of it. I was like, well, yeah. if the game ain't kind of punish me for this, that is how I'm going to do it. Turtle, turtle, turtle. Yeah. And that sucks. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> the biggest culprit of that was in Chapter 11 with Tanoka again. And yeah. It was the stairs, and you fucking, like, there was, there was, like, you could, you took, what, 50 turns, 45 turns in that chapter? And, or something? And, and I don't not know. to mention, they had the fucking Rainbow Sage captive. Couldn't they have just done, in 15 turns, we kill the Rainbow Sage? I mean, well, I they mean, wanted no, they us... they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. Because, maybe not, but uh, maybe, like... Story-wise, story but, I mean, but even so, like, it's just... There's chests here. Make up some weird story that thieves just came in here or something. Like it, normal soldiers can get up. I don't yeah. even know why they put so much emphasis on. I'm just no. That's the Rainbow Sage. Fuck it. I'm not even gonna go there. I'm not even going there. I'm not even going there. <laughs> and they and they had that. I, one of the chapters that I enjoyed the most was the Smashing Pots chapter. Uh, I think it's. I can't remember chapter 15. I think. Uh, the one where we have to, where, yeah, where to smash the pots. You actually had a turn limit on that. It wasn't a very strict one, 16 turns, but it still incentivized me to move forward, and I really enjoyed that. And, of course, I have to talk about my favorite chapter in the, in the game, and that is chapter 10. That was a masterpiece. I really wish the people who designed chapter 10... Like, if they had multiple people working on the chapter design, could they just fire everyone else and have the people that made Chapter 10 do the entire game? Because, wow, that was a masterpiece. That was an absolute masterpiece of a defense chapter. Best chapter I've ever played in Fire Emblem, hands down. Chapter 10. Fantastic. If every chapter was like that, I don't know, Corrin could have been 10 times as stupid, and I would still love this Fire Emblem game. So, <laughs> that, let's talk about the story. I don't feel like I can say much that you guys haven't said already. Um, but I'd like to point out the fact that uh, it seems like it's it's just for some reason I just feel like Corin is one big inside joke. Like I I cannot for the life of me understand how they can think Corin is a good character. And for whatever reason, it kind of felt like they actually didn't. 
Um, because I don't understand how any person that has this as their job could ever write such a character and actually be satisfied with it. And what I think they did about the story is that they simply did not put a lot of resources into the writing. And that is the only explanation I have for this game. They put all of their resources into arch, map design, and gameplay design. And they probably had like two people, two monkeys, work on the writing. That's the only thing I can say. Like, funny thing you mentioned that, uh, Manx, is that they specifically went out of their way to hire someone who was actually did do some legit, legit writing, Shin Kubayashi. It didn't they? To, uh, it didn't they? This game. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is the... The, I think it can be more attributed to the fact that since this is a game that's told in three separate stories, mm. it has to stand. It has to try and stand stand tall by itself on those three different stories. Yeah. Both right, conquest and revelation. But it just the, the Gaspar this up. There's a lot of uh, hanging questions that the hanging threads that are left behind that just want to hook the player in. So hey, play this route, or hey, play this route. Maybe you'll get the whole picture this way. That and is very. Think, that's a very good I point. Just really, I just really feel that this this game should probably feel like it should stay be more standalone like i felt birthright was if they cleaned up some of the little the more slow bits of birthright it could very well have been a standalone fire album just fine you're but very you're right you're very right it feels like most of these like I have, i've only played conquest i can only speak for conquest but i get the feeling that conquest is very like eh -eh, by the other routes eh -eh. See what happens next. E -e. But I also think that a lot of limitations were set upon the story writers because me and Gast mentioned this very quickly into the story. Have you noticed, Ray, that this, at least Conquest, is the first Fire Emblem game with zero politics? Something like that, yeah, I have Politics that. just doesn't, ex it, it doesn't exist in this game. There's no politics. There are no, po there, there are no politics, it's just the royals do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, there's and no... Yeah. And, and I think that's weird, because every Fire Emblem game has been very deeply entrenched in politics. Like, Fire Emblem 4 is the best case of politics. Like, it's politics the game, essentially. And this game just had nothing. And it felt very hollow as a result. And I'm wondering if they placed limitations on the story writer, saying, we want this story to cater to kids, so do not write about politics. Uh, okay, what are we supposed to do then? I don't know, just write events, like... Make them go to a Vin village, make them go to a fox village, make them go here, make them go on a journey. Like, they wanted this game to feel more like a journey. They didn't want the whole political blah blah blah, invade this nation, blah blah blah, nobles and counts and uh, dukes and shit like that. They didn't want that. And that I feel feels like the, weird. I, I, feel, I feel like the, the setting of the story just prevented politics from even being an option. Like... You have the good guys and the bad guys. One guy, one side doesn't like the other side. And there's just a bunch of filler. There's yeah. just like a bunch of filler countries just there that are neutral. Like, what an excuse that is, I find. Like, and, I, and I will talk, All the rebellions yeah. are quelled. It's just like, oh, there's a rebellion here? Quell them. Just fight them off. And then there's something that came up here? Just fight them too. It's just like, you have, you don't really have much of a world when you just have a story revolving around two countries and literally no one else matters. So what yeah. kind of, like... It's just like what what politics can there really be? And, but what and, they, but, yeah. but the, like there's like what politics can there be? And then I'm like, oh wait, aren't we supposed to be changing Nor from the inside? Yeah. Wouldn't that be a really great place to have the politics in there? But they just sidestep it because at the very end of the game, that's when everything happens. It feels like the first twenty something chapters are just filler. They're just on a journey. Least. They're going through different places. We mentioned that in a, part, a couple of parts back. Like we're just going from one place to the other. Then Mangus came to the Wind Village, and then he came to the Fox Village, and then he went there, and then he came to Notre Sages, and then he came to Chev, and then he like he just goes from and 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 I'll get more. Uh, I'll talk more about gray morality in a moment, but um, the world feels very like I don't feel like I'm in a world at all. I, this this world has been the least immersing for me in any Fire Emblem game, and like take Awakening, which I think did a poor job building a world. Even Awakening gave me a world, you know? You had, you had fucking uh, Plagia, who was like the bad guys. You had like Feroxy, who was like the barbarians, and you had like Elise. And then you had like Valum over there. And like, it still felt like a world because there were at least continents with noble families and a little bit of politics. In this world, I, I don't even know what it looks like. Like, I, I, don't, I, I can't picture this world in my head. It just doesn't exist. And that is really weird. Same for me. Like, can you can you guys just Okay guys, I want you to, to, to have like a mental picture in your head. The subscribers too, if you if you played this um, if you played a lot of Fire Emblem games. Picture Akanai in your head. You can do it, right? You can you can picture Akanai in your head. 
You can Just picture, got it easy. yeah, drug draw. You can picture drug draw in your head. You can see it in your there. head. Uh, fucking uh, Alib. You can picture Alib in your head right now. Yeah. You can pick, yeah, you can see the different continents. You can go down to the southwest. You see the desert. You can go up to the Western Isles, you know. Uh, you can even see the even the Fire Emblem 8 continents I can see in my head. And, and in the Fire Emblem 10 and 11, you know, Telus, I can see that in my head too. And Awakening even. Try to picture the Fates universe in your head. Just to picture the continents. Can you do it? It's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing there. Yeah, I, I don't even I don't even know what the countries look like because all the all the overworld stuff is just like a Google Maps yeah, satellite it's picture. Like, it's I it can't look all like Google Maps map. I can't picture the continents at all, and and I think that's a big mistake. That's such a big mistake. And that is that makes the whole experience so cheapened, you know. So yeah, the, the world is weak, the characters are weak, and the story are weak. And then I come over to my last point, which is grey morality. And that's just... They had such potential to write grey morality in the Norouts. Because, you know, what I thought... When I saw Conquest and Birthright, what I thought was... Birthright is going to be the good guys. Conquest are going to be the grey guys. That's what I thought when I saw the, the covers. And that's why I was interested in Conquest. Birthright is going to be all about defending from, from, from Nor. But... Nor's gonna have a good reason to attack um, Hoshido. They're gonna have a good reason to attack Hoshido because maybe Hoshido did something to Nor. Maybe maybe the the former Hoshido king did something terrible to the kingdom of Nor that made them go poor and they want to take him back. And Garon's gonna be a very strict and and, and very like angry and 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 you know stern ruler but he's gonna have some sort of morality and reasons for doing what he does and you know and j joining nor is gonna be like you can understand their motives even though they're doing necess not necessarily what's right that's what that, that that was my initial reactions to nor and hoshina i was like oh this is gonna be great to see how this plays out turns out there was absolutely nothing gray here even 50 shades of gray have more gray in it than this story uh it's <laughs> <laughs> it's like um there's not there's 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 just black and white. This is the most black and white story I've ever seen. You have well, obviously one... because they were, they advertised it as such. The, the covers, as you said, you it was only your fault. That you were probably colorblind. You didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> we must. <laughs> that was a good one, right? Oh, we must all remember, guys. <laughs> Corin didn't choose uh, conquest. We did when we bought it. Best con <laughs> best comment I've seen in the YouTube. Anyway, getting sidetracked. So. No gray morality, <laughs> and they fucking rode in a slime monster as the villain, because, as Gast said, the only reason anyone could ever have for hating Corrin is, is if they're a demon. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just, like, I feel a little bit cheated out of a good story, because, like, I had hoped... I really a like little. gray morality. I, a I, little? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like gray morality a lot, and it's... In my opinion, shouldn't be that hard to write, but I it just seems to me like they got so many limitations placed upon them. I like to think that the writers aren't retarded, and maybe that they had very little to work with. I don't know. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be defending them, but I don't yeah. Know. When I think of when I think of pale-haired protagonist caught in a shitty situation and there's gray morality involved, I'm thinking of Micaiah over Corin every single yeah, time. Yeah, you actually made that Same. comparison. Yeah, Micaiah is a bad character, but even she's better than Corin. Even I have to admit, I, I, I put Makai as one of my least favorite lords, but after playing through Conquest, <laughs> uh, she might be usurped by uh, Norcorin just to be just to be there. Uh, just so I, I say that I know that Hoshino Corin is a lot better. I, I, know, I mentioned this to you earlier, Mangs, but it was like, you know a game fucks up one. when you start glorifying things that happen, like other games that happened before this one. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Like fucking Emerin's death. That felt more impactful than Mikoto. Yeah. <laughs> Mikoto did just shit all. She yeah. was there for a chapter, and then My she God. became a martyr. Oops. Uh, yeah. yeah and like... they, oh God, there's just I could literally spend hours. Yeah, that, that's what I'm feeling. Story, I feel like we can never honestly, get to the bottom of this. This conversation is going to devolve into that. So I think, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think you said I'll be. So yeah, no, I, I'll just uh, finish off with my last point, which is the villains. Uh, this game had oh, really, God. really oh, bad God. villains, um, and I think that like. It is literally a dark age in terms of villains because in most of the other Fire Emblem games, I actually like many of the Fire Emblem villains. I feel like Fire Emblem villains have always been stronger than the Fire Emblem protagonists. Lords in the Fire Emblem universe have always been sort of bland and a little bit boring, but they've worked. 
Like, you can't say that Marth has a really in-depth personality, you know? You can't really say no, that. You could, probably, you could probably just assume that, that though, just so they can appeal to the player character. Yeah, that's they fine. They have to be a nice guy. That's but fine. the villains have, for the most part, been pretty good. Even going back to the first game, I think Medius was a good villain. I think Harden was a good villain. I think Alvis was a fantastic villain. I think that... I'm not going to talk about Birdo. Um, I think Manfroy... <laughs> I think Manfroy, Julius, good villains. Nurgle, really good villain. Sethiel, amazing villain. Uh, you know, Leon, wonderful, masterful villain. You like Zephiel as a villain? Yeah, I do. Uh, like, for the most part, I do, even though his reasonings are a little bit shit. Uh, you know, a fucking uh, Black Knight, good villain. Uh, Valter, even minor characters. Valter, Valter really good villain. Orson, Carlisle, these are like... Yeah. Kalak, come on, guy, guy, Kalak, guy, 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 really Kalak. good, yeah. yeah. It's like, Sacred Stones has these, has these minor villain characters who just have, like, the most, like... They're just, like... No, not much. Not much explanation, but it's just enough to be like, "Holy shit, this is like." And then, these are guys are evil. These guys are bad people, yeah. and even they have like their own separate motivations behind it. And it's just like, yeah. even minor, even even minor ver villains are more memorable than the major villain of another game. And then we like, have, and then we come to fates, Iago and Hans. They are, they are <laughs> the two chuckle fucks. The Iago, they're like Hans, fucking Beavis and Butthead and Garon. I'm not even gonna mention Garon Uncle because he's Garen. not. Garen isn't even a person. He's just a slime monster. Iago and Hans. That, that's what we. That's what we're left with. Iago and Hans. Like literally. Like I think they have to be the worst villains of all time. I think literally yeah, I will yeah, rank them as the worst villains of all time. You have Hans, who's just he. Even I the fucking Hans, brigands. I, I, I adore Iago. I'm just gonna just gonna say that it's all in his. It's all in his. How he carries himself in his voice. But he's <laughs> as a just a flame plain villain. Ugh, get him out of here. I like Iago's design. I think he looks awesome. And I really like the sleazy advisor guy. But the fact that he behaves like a comic book villain, going like, meh, heh, heh, the avatar shall suffer, meh. Um, Hans, <laughs> Hans is literally less interesting than a generic dragon boss from the Game Boy Advance series. Like, literally. That is. He could literally Dude, be a boss. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that just. Right Fall yeah. To kick his ass. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So yeah, that just should just round everything off. Horrible story, really, just horrible story. But amazing gameplay, and I had really fun. And if I ignore the story, which I very much intend on doing, then I will rate this Fire Emblem game pretty highly, in my opinion, enjoyment-wise. Probably, probably, probably will make it to my top five list. I just haven't quite decided where to place it yet, enjoyment-wise. Story-wise, it's rock bottom like li literally dead last so that is that is my final judgment of this game you guys have anything else to add no um, not really all right i uh hmm? i find it oh, i'm just gonna yeah i mean i just find it interesting how even though um like i, I find it interesting how people w will like have personal rankings for each game and they kind of and they it's it's interesting how fire emblem like People value Fire Emblem and they like Fire Emblem for different reasons. And it's like, if yeah. you are really, if you are someone who's really into gameplay more than anything else, then you're gonna really enjoy Conquest. But if you're someone like me who really enjoys depth of characters and the story, and 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 the gameplay is like very, as like a close second or third, then it's gonna be different for me. Like I just, ah, oh God, I don't, I'm not really big on rankings, but it's fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it's bottom. It's like lobster bottom dwelling tier for me. <laughs> yeah, fire on the one out of Well, currently, story. currently for me, uh, from as far as my rankings goes, uh, Face is sitting nice, snugly in fourth place, just a bit under FE12, nine and five. Oh, nice. And, nice. I, and I have a lot of personal reasons for the top three, so that's why four Face is right there. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. I think we have come to the end of what I like to call the fallout of uh, Fates. Um. Hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, LP, and to answer the same question that I get a million times, like, every single day. Yes, I'm gonna play Birthright. Yes, I'm gonna play Revelations. God damn it, guys. How many times do I have to say it? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this LP. Thank you for joining me, Gast, along the ride, and, and thank you, Ray, for joining us towards the end. Um, it's not a problem. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It was very fun. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun, guys. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this LP as much as uh, I have enjoyed playing it. And uh, you can I be done for... I, I, I hope there aren't a lot of people who hate me by the end of this. Probably. Because I know there are a lot of people who really... Who have, who Just like me, it's a Radiant Dawn LP. 
Yeah. Don't, don't you dislike me greatly. So just like I, people I, hate I apologize, Ray. But... I think it's the same people I hate Ray that hates you now too. I think it's the same <laughs> demographic. It's the people that just badly want me to like the game and they take any excuse to like hate any any reasons for me not liking it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we shall end this LP right here. Please consider leaving a like and a comment. Thank you for all the likes and comments you have given me so far. This LP is still number f number one on YouTube. Thank you guys. I'm so proud of that. And it's because you guys have been so diligent in your commenting and your liking and everything. So, without any further ado, I have been Mangs. Joining me as my co-commentator have been... Gas Station. And, and me, uh, Major Knight 4004. Yes. So we shall see you guys next time. Goodbye! See ya. Thank you all. God bless.